Hello everyone and welcome back to SAFC Fan TV. Sunderland have just picked up three points at the stadium light at home to our bogey team Fleetwood. Uh, Dino, we're going to go to you first after our brilliant stream. Um, sure, if there's anyone who can possibly bring Sunderland fans down just a little bit now, it's going to be you. But sure, you've got nothing bad to say on this and everything's happy days. Well, why wouldn't it be happy days? We've, we've won, kept a clean sheet with a makeshift defence. Lee Johnson's changed his uh, formation. He's made uh, certain decisions like not bringing, uh, not starting Jordan Jones, and it's worked out today. Um, the game was patchy in in parts. In parts, I thought we took control of the game. It was just a matter of when we were going to break them down. And I did say it's only a matter of time before we score. And that's what happened. It was lovely by McGeady. He's been a man on form of his crossing. Ian O'Brien just jumps in at the back post, heads it in. Lovely. Overall, it was one of them games where I had a bit of everything, a bit of fight, a bit of quality, a bit of uh, scrappiness. But overall, it's positives. And I didn't really think Fleetwood offered anything going forward. I don't think they really had a shot at Lee Burge. So it's positive signs. It's a good game and three points on to the next one. Yeah, Fleetwood didn't challenge us too much. Quite a, a scrappy first half in particular, I would say. The, the, the game opened up a little bit in the second half and we just had that little bit of quality, I think, with McGeady putting that pinpoint cross in. O'Brien did really well on his header. I mentioned it on the last stream. I thought it was a really, really good header to kind of... The, the way he was positioned and then the way the defender was in between him and the goal as well. And then obviously we're, we're, we're wrapped it up with a second one, a great ball in by Chris Maguire. Max Power came into the box completely unmarked. Um, really clever run from him. Um, Mr Kirkbride, uh, are you all happy about the result? There's, 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 there's a, a fantastic night on your side. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Back-to-back uh, -back wins. Uh, probably wasn't the most like effective performance if you take into account how the performance was against Burton at the weekend. But like I said before kickoff tonight, it was about getting those three points uh, no matter what way you do it. And um, yeah, I thought we were relatively comfortable throughout the game, to be honest. I thought Fleetwood rarely tested Lee Burge at all tonight, to be honest. Uh, what a cross from Aidan McGeady uh, for O'Brien's header. And um, Max Power, uh, unmarked at the the far post uh, to head past uh, their goalkeeper, which I thought, looking back, their goalkeeper could have done better. But Lee Johnson was saying uh, how much has Max Power improved under this manager. Another great performance from him again. But uh, yeah, some, some another uh, great set of individual performances in the game. Dion Sanderson did well alongside Conor McLaughlin. Luco Nine, he's always there, um, even when he's playing in defence, to be... Uh, right place, right time to whack the ball away um, and do well on his in his defensive duty. So overall, a fantastic night, mate. New ownership, another three points. Happy days. Roll on the next game. Now, I know said Fleetwood didn't challenge us much and you can look at their recent form, um, especially since Grayson's came in and you can have a look and say that they aren't exactly the most challenging side in the league. But lads, we've kept two clean sheets in a row now and it happens to be after we went to this three at the back formation. Dino, I'll go to yourself. Do you think this three at the back formation is worth sticking with, even when we get, even when the likes of Bailey Wright and Tom Flanagan come back, and we've got more options? No, no. I mean, I remember when uh, we were playing three at the back on the park, and everyone was saying, "Scrap it, scrap it. It's not working," and all that stuff. Our formation is four three three. I feel like that's where we play the best. Yeah. I think it's what's be best suited for the bunch of players we have. Um, we're only playing this formation because we have no centre backs. Don't get us wrong, we did. I did realise we referred back to four three three when yeah. Jones and Carl Winchester came on, but that was just for the last five to ten minutes, just to probably shut up shop. The the three at the backs only there for the simple fact we have no centre backs. I mean, Dion Sanderson's. I don't even think he is actually a centre back. Conor McLaughlin isn't a centre back, and neither is Luke Warnine. It's just a makeshift team at the minute, and it is working. But when we get our centre-backs back, go back to 4-3-3 and do what we've been doing. Fair point. Do you look like you're in agreement with Dino there? Yeah, absolutely. But um, I think credit's where it's due for the players who are currently playing in those positions. Like, was it Conor McLaughlin when we first signed him? Um, he was brought in to be a right-back and he's doing very well um, alongside Dion Sanderson. And you could argue as well, Dion Sanderson, was he brought in to be a full-back or a centre-back uh, who knows? I think 
overall, if you just play Sanderson anywhere um, across a back four at the moment or a back three like we played tonight, um, he's done very well. Um, it's uh, He's a player that I would personally like to try and bring back for next season, but it's going to be very hard. I think Wolves will look at some of his effective performances this season and may want him um, as part of their future plans going forward. But yeah, just a really good uh, defensive display. Like we touched on another clean sheet, uh, even with some of our key defensive players out, like Bailey Wright and Jordan Willis as well. So, And also Den we've got Denver Hume to come back as well. So you can't complain in that department. You really can't. Um, but once again, like like I said, another three points. Uh, Happy days. I'm buzzing at the moment, mate. I tell you. Yeah, mate, I, I think we all are. I think even Dino's just about managing a smile on his face ever so slightly. <laughs> just about. There we go. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, absolutely brilliant defensive night. Two clean sheets in a row as well. Two bogey teams beating on that. That's really important for confidence. I think, um, you know, teams who we've, we've struggled against in, in recent years. It's the first time I've beat, beaten Fleetwood since we've been relegated to the third division again. And uh, only the second time we've beaten Burton Albion since we got uh, relegated to the championship, I believe, uh, just on Saturday. Defensively tonight, as I said, that was the key. We were absolutely brilliant. And if you still keep a clean sheet, you've always got that chance of nicking a goal, which we did, um, did end up getting the breakthrough after quite a, a scrappy game. But if we hadn't kept a clean sheet, then we wouldn't have had that option of just that... Um, opportunity I should say of just nicking a goal like we did and and then you know obviously I know we, we got a second one but that probably came uh, off the back of the first one really but I mean to touch on the goals tonight two goals scored one by Aidan O'Brien one by Max Power but I think an important point is that Charlie Wright didn't score today but we came away with two goals I mean how important is it do you know that you know we, we get goals um from elsewhere in the team other than just uh, the main man up top which has been Charlie White? It's very important because your striker doesn't always score goals. It's it's one of them things. Strikers are judged on goals, but if no one else is scoring around them, then you're just relying on that one striker. You need your team to help you score goals when you're not in the greatest form. I think this is too... It's not too good. No, he scored against Burton, what am I talking about? But he hasn't scored a day. I, I thought he was still OK in his hold-up play. Oh, he, yeah, still, yeah. he still affected the team, but... Aidan O'Brien, he's had a lot of stick recently and I think his performances have ramped up. He's not the player we've seen at the start of the season where he was flimsy and he was losing the ball. He looks like a player playing with confidence. That's Lee Johnson's doing. Lee Johnson's has brought him in and he's a total different player. He helps White score goals and he started to get on uh, a couple of goals himself. In the same with Max Power, Max Power is a totally different player to what he was last season. He was a passenger. He was he was always a passenger. I always give him a lot of criticism, saying that he doesn't do anything. And look at him today, he scored a goal. He's playing at right back. He's playing centre mid, and he's actually playing well. I mean, yeah, it's it's positives all round, and that's positives to Lee Johnson. He's he's doing it. He's he's cracking it at the minute. He's making rash decisions, and it's working for him. Yeah, do you, do you think Lee Johnson just came in and boosted the confidence in the players, believing themselves? Now, I mean, Daniel Tushin there, Max Power looks. It's still early days, but I think you know his recent performances have been the, the, some of the best I've seen in, in a Sunderland shirt. And obviously, White's been in great form, but Aidan O'Brien's another one who he's just seemed to have found him a good role as being the second striker. And he, you know, he, he tends to do a lot of off the work ball, but even a deal getting himself a goal. Is Lee Johnson just you know revolutionised some of these players um, in such a, a short period of time? Yeah, not only that, I think he's also discovering new positions that some of the players didn't think they were good at playing in. I mean, who would have thought Max Power would do a decent job at right back for us? And also, you were touching on there, Aidan O'Brien, more or less playing like a number 10, or you could even play Aidan O'Brien on the flanks of a front three as well. And who would have thought that uh, before Lee Johnson came in? So he is definitely uh, changing a lot of the way how some of these players play in terms of where they're played on the pitch. And um, he's also just improving them um, as footballers in general. And it's working right now. And um, it'll be interesting to know, obviously, you, we've touched on this show a few times uh, over the last few weeks. A lot of these players are out of contract in the summer. Which ones will Lee Johnson see as part of his plans for the future? And with the ownership now in place, I think developments will slowly start to come to the surface of what players will be offered new deals for next season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, just on, on tonight, really, a really scrappy first half. I think, you know, both teams are just figuring each other out. But, you know, we, I think got there in the end is maybe the, the phrase for tonight. And um, just brilliant that, that we actually managed to get the result, beating the bogey team. And, and now we go into Crew Alexander, a team we're bottom of the table with, 
you know, you, you were backwards to win that um, all the way. Um, anyway, we're going to leave it there. Um, oh. We're, we're going to continue this competition tonight. Jacob, if you want to quickly, quickly put in with something, go on. No, I was saying, you say crew were bottom, it's actually Burton Albion at the moment. No, close to the bottom, I was saying. Oh, close to the bottom. I might not have worded it brilliantly, but no, anyway. No, We'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation uh, on Thursday Night Live, I'm sure, before we um, have we uh, go, go away to Alexandra on Saturday. Thank you to everyone for watching our uh, quick little review. Please do leave a like uh, if you have enjoyed the review um, as well. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, it is absolutely free. Um, and one more thing. Uh, go on, do not see you trying to get in. I think you're going to mention it. I was just about to remind you. Go on, what were you going to say? Yeah, um, in preparation for our game at Wembley, we were putting together a little video... Um, if you do have any photos of yourself at Wembley or in London um, in our recent visits, please do send them in at sefcfantv73 at gmail.com or our social media pages, which are just sefcfantv on Instagram and Twitter and sefcfantv73 on Facebook. And we also we are, of course, all on social media ourselves if you want to go about it that way. And I'm sure we can get it to Conrad, our editor. Um, also, if you do watch from around the world, we would love little clips of uh, where people will be watching from, just saying hi, you're from Canada. Um, how are the lads? Hopefully we can get the win today and give maybe some of your thoughts on the game. Just, as I say, uh, send it into the, the, the places I've mentioned. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. And hopefully we'll be back on Thursday night to preview. Um, I will talk about the game and preview our game away at Crew Alexandra. Where hopefully we'll pick up another three points. But for myself, Jack Dodds, from Dino, I'm from Jacob Kirkby. Thank you to everyone for watching and we'll see you on Thursday evening. Bye-bye.